This weekend post is all about luminosity masks. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In Post. Thanks for joining me today. Today's topic is luminosity masks, and this is something that, again, was a theme that came out of the workshops I was hosting in Oregon earlier this month. It's um, it's a technique I'm using more and more and more, and it gives me just a nice, uh, natural-looking enhancement to various subjects in the scene. And I want to show you how they work in Lightroom, in On One, and in Luminar. So if you've got any of those packages, you have access to these, and we'll just go through how each one of them works. Up front, what is a luminosity mask? It is a mask that is auto-generated for you based on the brightness values of your photo. So just like any mask, dark or black conceals, brights or whites reveal, and the gray tones are somewhere in between. And I'll show you this photo here. I'm gonna start in Lightroom, and I'm just going to press the V key very quickly. So I'm not doing anything with masking yet, just pressing the V key. And here is a black and white version of the photo. This is the mask that would get created for us automatically when you make a luminosity mask. This is true for any package. And so looking at this, we could tell that by default, you know, these dark areas here, the shadow areas, as a mask that would be hiding whatever type of adjustment we're doing. And the bright areas would be revealing any type of adjustment. And then the gray areas are somewhere in between. So you can get the idea that this is the kind of mask that would be very difficult to hand paint. But using luminosity masks, we can target things to uh, different areas of the photo, different tonal values, nicely, cleanly, and you know, very smoothly. So with that, let's take a look at them in action for each different software package. Let's start off in Lightroom. I have this scene here of the beach in Oregon. I want to add some crispness to this particular rock. Now, if I added any type of crispness like detail or clarity globally with the basic panel or with the detail panel, that's going to affect the entire scene. And I don't want to add crispness into the surf or into the sand. I like how that's nice and soft, but I want this rock to jump out. And so, yes, I could use a brush and paint things in, but I want to use a luminance mask because I'll get some very nice natural grading on this where the darker areas will have less of the clarity, the brighter areas will have more. It will give the rock a little more of a three-dimensional feel. So where are luminance masks? They are in the graduated filter, the radial filter, or the brush in Lightroom. For this scene, I'll use a radial filter, and I'll just draw a big bubble over it. You can see I have clarity pushed up and the clarity is getting applied everywhere that this radial filter is touching. I hover there for a moment. Everywhere that has red is getting that full-blown clarity applied. I want to tailor this back. So let's turn on the selected mask overlay so this red will stay up on the screen. Down here at the very bottom we have range mask. We have a couple of options. You can do it by color. You can do it by luminance. And luminance is what we want. That's going to be the, the various tones of our image. We can control the range. Shadows on the left, highlights on the right. And if I start tugging in on the right-hand side, we're limiting the effect on the very bright highlights. And notice now the sky is starting to fade as far as that red tone there. So we're not applying any of that clarity there. Smoothness is like the the edge you know how quickly do i transition from a highlight to a shadow if i make it very very smooth we'll see some of that tone that little reddish hint start bleeding out into the sky more if i make that smoothness sharper you can see i get a crisper edge but notice that there is you know still like deeper reds and i know it's hard to see on the overlay but there's deeper reds on the rock here and there's lighter reds on the brighter part. So we end up with a very nice, natural looking smoothness. Now, one other thing that you'll notice is there is still some of that effect, this clarity, being added into the water. Why is that happening? Well, there are some very deep shadowy areas in the surf, right? In between the whitewash, you can see it down here even clearer, there's dark areas in the water and it's like the rock being reflected in the sheen here that's being picked up you can always clean up your luminance mask with the brush and the erase this is the brush that's part of the radio mask choose erase i have auto mask and i'll make that brush actually i don't even need auto mask this will be pretty straightforward without it and i'll just sweep this 
underneath to remove that clarity from the surf. So now I very quickly targeted the rock and we'll see the results here. And it looks really nice. I can do before and after. And notice how the brighter parts of that rock really pop up. There's some clarity being added in the shadowy areas. You get a very nice looking 3D feel. So that's how luminance masks or luminance range masks work in Lightroom. Now let's have a look at On One Photo Raw using On One Photo Raw 2019. Just came out about a week or so ago. It's got luminosity masks built into all the filters and all of the local adjustments. So here's the same photo again. And this time I'll add a dynamic contrast filter, which is you know, one of my favorites. And notice that the entire scene gets punched up uh, pretty well before and after. There's Christmas adding up in the, uh, in the surf. You can really see it showing up in the sand. I want to make sure I'm getting my rocks taken care of here. So next to the filter name is the masking options. And I open that up and I have Lumen to create a luminosity mask. I'm going to click view so we can see it. Now this is the mask. This is not a black and white version of the photo. This is the mask that was created by the luminosity button here, the lumen button. Now we know about masks, black conceals, white reveals. I want to get more contrast on my rocks. I want those to be the brighter parts of the mask, not dark. Right now it's being hidden. If I turn off the mask view just for a moment before and after. Notice there's very little happening to the rock, but watch the brighter parts of the surf before and after. You're seeing it along this surf line edge that's getting an extra pop because that's the brightest part of this scene. With the luminance mask or luminosity mask turned on, those brightest parts are getting the most contrast. I'll turn the mask view back on. These bright areas here are getting the most of this dynamic contrast right now. I'll press the invert button. Now I have this photo negative type looking thing here, but now I'm getting closer to what I want. The rocks have this very bright, powerful white mask on them. That means I'm targeting this dynamic contrast to the brighter areas. There are two other sliders that really help fine tune your mask, levels and window. Levels is kind of the transition between bright and dark from the point of view of the mask. What's really nice about On One, I like how they've really implemented this here, is I can work visually. So I can just start sliding this thing around. And I want to get this uh, sky to be nearly dark. I want almost black because I just want the rocks to have, have the punch. Window is going to restrict the tones that get affected in the mask. And again, I'll work visually. I'll just grab the left-hand side and start pulling that in. That's wrong. I don't want to do that. I want to keep those rocks bright. So instead I'll pull from the other side and start minimizing what is getting affected by this mask. And notice the surface starting to turn blacker and now the beach is. And since I want to add this contrast to all these rocks, I'll probably stop right around there. And finally, I can clean up the remaining parts of the mask just using my brush. So I have my mask brush. It's already set to paint out. I'll make it a little bit bigger and you know, start removing the areas I do not want to have any additional contrast boost. Sweep down through that rock here, like that, a little careful at the edge, and then take care of the rest. And you get the idea, I can clean up everything uh, to my satisfaction. I'll turn off the view, and now we'll look at before and after. Here's before, the contrast with the mask, and here's after. Let me push these values up really far, so that it comes out on the screen before and after. That's how luminosity masks work in On One. And I advise you to work visually and think about what subjects you want to accentuate in the photo. Make sure those are the brightest whites or at least getting the most of that bright white and bright gray part of your mask. And then dial in the, uh, the rest of it with the level and the window slider. Just turn on the mask, work visually. It's a great way to get your luminosity mask fine-tuned in Photo Raw. Now we'll take a look at Luminar and see how luminosity masks work there. A little different than other packages is luminosity masks work on an adjustment layer. So it's a good idea to get all your basics done if you're working straight up in Luminar first. Then go up to the layers area and add a new adjustment layer. 
In this adjustment layer, we'll add a structure filter so that we can get some contrast and some punch and some detail in those rocks. But notice it's affecting the entire scene, right? That's not what we want. We want to target this toward the rocks. So I will click on the brush in the adjustment layer and choose luminosity. Luminar will go out and create a luminosity mask for us. You can see the luminosity mask hiding up here in this little tiny swatch. And as we know that black conceals, white reveals, let me click on the brush, turn on that tool, and so we can visualize with this eye here where the mask is created. Anywhere that's red is getting the effect of the structure. Anywhere that is not red or a lighter colored red is not getting as much structure or not getting anything at all. This is the opposite of what we want. So I can go into the mask area, invert, and now this is looking a lot better. We're targeting these areas for the rocks much more closely. Now, um, this is where Luminar stops with luminosity masks. I'd want to clean this up further and remove the effect from the foreground, the midground. So I have some painting left to do, right? So I have to switch over into the erase mode. I'll make the brush nice and big, and then just start removing the effect from the areas I don't want. And I won't make you watch me paint this whole thing, but you get the idea. Start to sweep around here, get rid of all this stuff from the foreground so that I'm really just targeting the rocks themselves. So luminosity masks are available in Luminar, but they're implemented a little differently and we don't have as many controls to fine tune the range of them. Well, the tip of the week is luminosity masks. I'm using them all the time. They're great ways to either isolate subjects, get a nice natural looking adjustment. And in this video, we're using contrast, but this could be anything. It could be temperature adjustments. It could be exposure adjustments, dodging and burning and really tightening in on just you know the very bright parts of a subject or the very deep shadowy parts of a subject. And if you're using Lightroom, On One, Luminar, you've got access to them in any package that you're using. So explore them if you haven't already. Check them out. I think you'll find that they're really useful for your post-processing workflow. And that'll do it for this week's In Post. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know somehow. Comments on the video below. Questions about photography, hit me up in the comments or send me a message through my website if you want to keep it private. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.